I really like the work of Dr. Gabor Mate. Of course, piggybacking on a lot of other greats. But he poses the idea that our culture, the fabric of our society, is broken. And not just broken, but sick. I would pose both physically and mentally and spiritually. Why the hell not? And hence, we are all broke. I mean, we are born pure, ripe, and impressionable. And because we live in a sick society, we too become sick, that's all. The food, the air, the water, the propaganda, the ideas put in your head. And I just want to touch on one as I open this video, I don't want to be long-winded. And it's the idea of continuous growth. For instance, corporations are encouraged to produce greater profits every quarter, every year, and grow. Governments grow. People are encouraged to continue to add to themselves. The idea that what is, is not enough. And when I look at this old world, I don't see that. And I think that's the problem, or one of them, of course, with today's societies. I think both the socialist and capitalistic system has failed. I think we can say it. But more so and deeper is this idea of perpetual growth. I think sustainability, in the case with a company, just continuing to make a good product year after year and sell the same amount should be perfectly fine. Even with my channel, I'm satisfied. I need no more growth, even with my physical body. Would I want to be any taller? It doesn't matter, because nature is in perfect balance, and we are part of that system. That system is functioning just fine. It is us that threaten that system with our idea of perpetual growth. I thank you for being here this week. I love you all. God bless and welcome. Why would anybody approve of what you want to do? It's not what they want to do. Naturally, you might not approve of what others do. It might just seem stupid, but it's what they want to do. Maybe that's extreme. Maybe we just need to find the middle ground. We're going to look at this video by Streets of Tartaria. The Kremlin's Myth, Secrets of the Past. And this is something that him and I discussed what seems like several years ago. There's this other Russian channel, and we don't understand what he's saying. For some reason, they don't allow or have translations. I don't know if I do, so I don't want to talk shit. But anyway, we love his videos, and the goal was to have them translated so that we could share them with this community. And he's done that. I'm very excited. And we're gonna check it out. So we start out in the Kremlin, the State Kremlin Palace. We can see this pattern right away. The Kremlin began in 1367 and took one year to build. It was built of white limestone, which was delivered from quarries that are located 50 miles from Moscow. The weight of the limestone exceeded 112,000 tons. In the 15th century, limestone walls could no longer be part of defensive functions. Sir Ivan III ordered the old wall to be demolished and replaced with brick ones. Construction of the new walls began in 1485. Construction lasted more than 10 years and used 100 million bricks. To deliver this amount of bricks, it took more than a million horse and wagon rides. This guy added a wide moat surrounding the castle fort and filled it with water, intended as a defense mechanism. This was done in 1508. The moat was 36 meters wide and eight meters deep. Its walls were lined with bricks. And let's first have a little look at the moat and see the plans of the Kremlin in the 16th century. The most famous of them is Sigmund's plan. In 1610, it was drawn up 
by Johann Gottfried. Plan depicts Moscow within the modern Garden Ring. It's categorized by great accuracy in this regard. Here another plan of the same period drawn up during the reign of Boris. In Atlas, where parts of the plan show the moat, other plans don't show it. Nowadays, some alternative researchers say that such a moat couldn't have existed. Let's see whether this moat could exist in this terrain. The elevation of the site where the tomb of the unknown soldiers are located is 142 meters above sea level. The center of Red Square near the Morum is at an altitude of 154 meters above sea level. Moreover, the elevation behind St. Basil's Cathedral is less than 130 meters above sea level. And there's a hill about 12 meters high. But if you dig a channel 15 meters long, the water will definitely come from the Moscow River. It's possible, theoretically, that a channel could deposit 15 meters of soil and form on Red Square, but nobody has explained how that could happen. Let's go back to the Kremlin walls. You might think that the brick Kremlin has been standing for about 500 years, but it's not like that at all. Let's see what has been reconstructed over the past 200 years. This tower was built in 1488. In 1805, this tower, which was in danger of falling, we are told, was dismantled to the foundation. In 1807, it was erected again. Next, this tower was built in 1485. In 1770, this tower and four others were dismantled to make room for the new Kremlin Palace. Several years later, Catherine II abandoned the project and a low tower was erected in its previous form. According to the drawing, the tower was built in 1491. In 1624, Russian architect and English master built the tower with a multi-tier top ending with a marquee and stationary clock. This tower was built in 1491. In 1812, the French, retreating from Moscow, blew up tower. In 1865, it was restored by an architect. Now let's put aside the official nonsense and go back to the beginning. A new brick Kremlin was built around 1870. We're told in 1870 there was no brick Kremlin. Most towers didn't exist. There were no battlements, no real paintings depicting the Kremlin. Moreover, all the paintings and plans for the Kremlin were made in the 19th century. So what was standing on the top of this place? There was a huge covered bastion or star fort. Why did I decide to look at this unique photograph from 1852? A view of this garden shows what looks to be palm trees. I can attest this is the trunk of a palm tree in the foreground. I'm sure a palm tree in Moscow won't surprise anyone, but let's go further. Look at the wall made of white blocks. It had to be rebuilt during the reign of Ivan the Third. It must have been made of bricks and stood on this spot for 400 years. Here a recent photo of this place. However, in the photos of 1870, everything already looks complete, full of brick, totally exquisite. Brick walls in 1870. Now let's look Look at it in modern times. Here we go. The historical museum in the center of Red Square. This place is the largest backfilled area. It's about 12 meters, roughly. However, we think it's possible that it was filled with 12 to 18 meters. Moreover, 5 meters of soil had to be removed in the garden. We can see what looks like urns here. Here's a photo from the excavations in our time. They excavated the walls near the river. The walls go down more than 10 meters. They didn't dig any further. They called it the side wall, but it isn't. This is actually the wall from the ancient bastion or star fort, and we can see that here. That extends within Red Square. Therefore, the wall that we all know was rebuilt in the 19th century. If you remove the soil, it goes down to a depth of 15 meters. We see the ancient actual wall and the underground part of St. Basil's Cathedral. But no one will do this because the Kremlin is a symbol invented and it must have an original appearance. In no case should it look like a star fort or a European bastion. Here we see some old Russians. This man holding the holy hand grenade. Russia, in its early period, was ruled by a branch of 
people or a dynasty which had reigned in Kiev and Russia since its foundation. Here's a side view of the Mosa River and this section of the wall, we are told didn't exist until the 19th century. Look here at the inclination of the wall. This inclination indicates the bastion was either lightly sprinkled with soil or the old lining has been completely stripped, so it would never occur to anyone that there was a wall there. This is the view from the other side. All the lower towers have been remade. Also behind the towers, we see the slopes of the former wall. Here I'll make a small model of the Kremlin or the Kremlin ancient bastion, as it must have looked before backfilling. Therefore, it was covered with soil to fool us. We have never had such a Kremlin. It was an ancient bastion that was hidden by brick walls. Awesome, awesome little snippet. And we'll continue to go through these. Look at this entrance here. Who are you, sir? This is my kingdom, and these men on either side fight for me. How about you? I am the wise counsel, and these two men are less wise than me. Oh, what about you guys? We are the keepers of the holy hand grenade, and we have many other tricks up our sleeve. And how about you? I know what I'm talking about. For this I eat well. He is full of shit. Watch it. Okay, this was something shared by Affected Collective. Shout out to her. Go sub to her channel, and we hope she comes back. This was something that used to play in between programs in the 60s. The National Anthem. You all know the song, and that's the song here. Oh, say, can you see? By the dawn's early light, all that good stuff. And I'm kind of taken back tonight to the days of old YouTube. And this evening's little rabbit hole, like I said, started out with watching an old affected collective video. And way back then, I didn't make videos. I just enjoyed them. A lot of Mandela effect, flat earth, trails in the sky. All the good stuff we were punished for discussing, it seemed. And again, I was just beginning my channel on the tail end of this glorious period. So anyway, this old kind of in-between programming, seeming innocent and patriotic production in the 60s turns out to be super sinister. And I do believe we're at war with an invisible group. And they poison us in our water, food, air. When it comes to air, both on a particulate level and also a microwave level. This piece of production is 1960. And there's like closed captioning at the bottom of the video. Just captions you can see here. And it took me a while to see it. I mean, it was designed not to be seen. But you have to slow it down. These words will transform, not letter for letter, totally different letters, in fact, and have a subliminal message. And this is 30 years before the movie They Live, which showed us this, in case we missed it, and most of us did. But this is a clue, and I believe it's still going on today. It's just much more sophisticated. So anyway, it's actually really cool footage, and without slowing it down, you can catch a few parts I'm trying right now and it's so quick but what I want to do is watch it in super slow and show you so I think originally it's the real thing and it's as it disappears I have it on really slow this is good here we can see I think trust in government is what it is. In the end, it's going to be by the dawn's early light. But let's look for trust in government. Trust. You see it? A little different lettering. T-R-U-S-T. So it's actually the letters leading. Trust the... And let's try it on YouTube. 0.25 speed by the dawn's early light. This is actually a legit one. This is actually what it looked like to the normal people. And so I did want to see the original. But now let's show you the affected collective video. 
Here it is. Rebellion is not tolerated. So you can actually see it beginning to pop up. And this is the bombs bursting in air. I mean, this has nothing to do with rebellion. And you can see it clear as can be. Rebellion, now it continues. Bursting in air is fading away. Is not. And now it's going to transform into tolerated. And look at this, with the World's Fair. God is real. God is watching. And I think this is using the Catholic Church take on God. I mean, not the God that flows through all of us, not the God that beats each one of our hearts, but some scary God. And the fact that it slipped into this subliminally is proof to me that nothing about this is good. But yet people would sit around in their living rooms, eating popcorn while watching this. Gave proof to the night beautiful old world building. Again, it's going to change into God is real, God is watching. God is right there. You can see it in the center. And now we can see is... Sorry, let me blow it up a little more. It's going to make it worse, I think. God is watching. It's going to turn into watching here. W-A-T at the bottom right corner. And T-C-H. I mean, no doubt. No absolute doubt. But immediately I had to jump over and look at the original, which I did, and sure enough, I actually think it's showing up better on my copy. The resolution is greater, but it's nice to have everything translated in advance just to cross-reference. So let's go back to hers. Obey, consume, obey, consume. Let's look at that again. Okay, I kind of missed it. I see consume developing. I see obey developing right here. There it is, obey. Being replaced, of course, perfectly by what they want you to see. It's fascinating psychology. You miss the first part, and now we see consume developing. Consume. There we go. Being replaced by still there. Unbelievable. One of 10,000 things that prove, in my opinion, that there is this active effort to manipulate and essentially brainwash the masses. And I can't stress it enough. Our only job is to reject peacefully as much as possible. Don't volunteer any information. Don't fill out unnecessary paperwork until we are certain that those that claim to be leaders are actually leading us in the right direction. Until then, no thank you. Let me remind those leaders, and all of us, that this is a nation under God, not under man. We have natural, God-given rights that trump the laws of man. And the burden of proof they are doing any good is left to them after videos like this that were aired in the 1960s. So I'll leave it there for this segment. Let me know your thoughts. Is this little video legit? Did you ever see it? Pretty unbelievable. Thank you all for being here. I love you all. God bless. And I'll see you next week.